Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. And vintage appliance lovers. I'm Ralph behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And we are baking a cake today. We are going to bake a pumpkin cake. We love pumpkin, don't we, Ralph? It's always, Anything pumpkin. Always pumpkin season around here. Always pumpkin season. Always looking for an excuse to cook or bake with pumpkin. But the real pumpkin, not those crazy over pumpkin overspiced pumpkin things that you get around the fall and Halloween no, and just, Thanksgiving just, just pure pumpkin yeah we goodness. like the pumpkin flavor that squash flavor that you yeah. get so we're gonna make a pumpkin cake today um, and uh, going on top of the cake will be a pumpkin cinnamon or will be a cinnamon cream cheese frosting so I see you have your cream cheese softening I there. do. I have a stick of uh, unsalted butter and I have an 8 ounce um, block of cream cheese. So that's just been softening. You're going to want that at room temperature. We're going to put this cake together, Ralph. Let's show our friends um, who love when we feature a vintage appliance and we have a lot of vintage mixers. Not as many as our friend Hans, but we've got a couple. Um, this is an uh, from the 1950s. This is a General Mills. You can get the top handle there. General Mills Betty Crocker Mixer. Got it. Okay. Beautiful. And it is beautiful. And it came with a large bowl like this. Um, it says Pyrex General Mills Incorporated, Minneapolis, Minnesota, made in USA. So you had a large bowl, you had the small bowl that went with it. I even have the, here's the original owner's manual nice. that came with it. What's unique about um, this, Ralph, I think, is that you have a timer here. Oh, wow. So you can actually set the timer, say, if you're supposed to mix something mm -hmm. for three minutes, you can set it for three minutes. And when three minutes is up, now that seems, it tells you. That seems like such a great feature. Why would they eliminate that down the road? Well, I, you know, I don't know. You also have a turntable here, so which moves like so, okay? We're actually going to move it this way because we're going to use a large bowl. And we want the, when you're using a large bowl like this, you always want the beaters to be on the outside of the bowl. Um, so, this is our wonderful vintage... Uh, General Mills Betty Crocker mixer. Somebody might be able to tell us who actually made these because General Mills didn't make appliances, although they sold mixers and irons and other things. So was General Mills actually in the military? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was there with, with General Patton and General Eisenhower. And General no, Electric. General Mills, like General Electric or General Motors. Still in business and a big, huge food conglomerate, although they may have gotten bought up by somebody else now, I don't know. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to use two large bowls. One we're going to use for our dry ingredients. The other we're going to use for our wet. Let's start with our dry, okay? Okay. Here we go. I've got two cups of all-purpose flour. In it goes. To that I'm going to add a cup and a half of sugar, okay? Now we got to put in our spices. Uh, we only have one spice actually. I'm going to put in two teaspoons here of ground cinnamon. One, I got another jar. I didn't know if I would quite make it. Two. Okay. So two, that's, two teaspoons of ground that's cinnamon. That's it for the spices? That's it. We're Good. just putting in cinnamon. See, we were saying how we, we are those kind of folks who really appreciate the pumpkin-y flavor mm -hmm. without being overly spiced. So if you're like that, then you'll want to make it like this, too. We need our leavener, so I'm going to put in two teaspoons here of baking powder. One, two. Okay. Speaking of vintage appliances, this is like a vintage product, isn't it? Clabber oh, Girl? Oh, Clabber Girl. Yeah, it's been around for a long time. I'm going to use one teaspoon of baking soda. So two powder and one soda. You with me? I am. Okay. I understand fully, but I could not do this without following the recipe. There we go. All right. Oh, and we're going to put in just a smidge of salt. What's my salt? A half a teaspoon. 
half a teaspoon just regular table salt. Okay, so this is our dries. And I'm going to just sort of mix those together with the whisk. So you got flour, sugar, salt, baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon. Cinnamon. And that's it. Okay. All right. So there's our dries. Now I've got a bowl over here. We have three wet ingredients, starting with three eggs. These eggs have been out for, oh, a good 40 minutes or so, so they're at room temperature. Always best uh, results when baking to use room temperature ingredients, including things like eggs and milk. Speaking and of which, you said that the um, green cheese was sitting out. How long did that need to sit out to soften? Oh, that needs it usually at least a couple hours. Um, okay, so three eggs, done. I've got one cup here of vegetable oil. One cup of vegetable oil. Okay, I'm gonna put that in there. Then, I've got one 15 ounce can, 100% pumpkin. Okay, not the pumpkin, we always say this, not the pumpkin pie mix. Because that's already spiced or right. seasoned? Or Just the pumpkin puree. Okay. Got it. Get every last bit of that orange goo. Yes. Beautiful orange pumpkiness. Okay. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use my whisk here and I'm going to kind of combine the oil, the eggs, so, and the pumpkin so together. Just kind of gently mix that, mm -hmm. integrate those ingredients. It's obviously a, a little tricky because it's so. Slop, you don't well, want to mix it too hard, it'll go flying like, all over the place. Right, or, or you could use if the mixer. Use a bigger bowl. Or, yeah, you could do this in the mixer, but we're going to use the mixer to combine. There we go. Okay. All right. So, this bowl actually goes with the mixer, the one that has yes. dries. I see. That actually is the mixer. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we'll put this up here. So, here's our dry. I'm going to turn this on low. Okay. Then let me get my spatula and see how it turns the bowl as the beaters turn. In we go with our pumpkin, eggs, and oil. Can you folks hear them out there over the sound <laughs> of the mixer? We've had louder we got ones. a chopper coming in. Chopper coming in. Incoming. Um, this isn't as loud as some mixers, though. This no. is actually for the year. Well, it's on a low speed, too. What, what year, oh, that's true. What year did you say this mixer? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure. Uh, but I mean, of our, you know, some of our vintage appliance friends will tell us. I think it's early to mid-50s. But now that I've got all that in, we'll take it up a little bit. Okay. Now we'll take that up and get that next. Now you're cooking with the electricity. By the way, We've got our oven preheating at 350 degrees. Okay. Ain't she a beaut? done mixing here. I would say we are thoroughly combined. So this little button, see this little black button here on the front? Yes. That is our ejector. I'll push that in and then these these uh, beaters come right off. Come right off. And let me try to scrape these down a little bit. Get all that cake batter out of there. But does a pretty nice job. Oh yeah. You know there's a lot of talk about which which uh, you know which uh, manufacturer had the best 
mixing action and uh, was the easiest to clean and <coughs> all Extras. that kind of stuff. Right, yeah. So there's a lot of schools of thought on, on the different systems. Of course, you know, we think of KitchenAid today as being like sort of the, State of the, the art. standard mixer that people use, but not everybody could afford a KitchenAid. Have they or been around since one. then? Yeah, they've been around a long time. They were certainly around when this mixer was manufactured. But um, two, you may have been able to get this mixer as like a um, wash my hand for a second as a premium, maybe at a discount if you bought um, gold medal flour. Oh, okay. Which was made by General Mills. Okay. Here we go. So I've greased and floured, I just used a baking spray, our 9 by 13 baking dish. We're going to put our batter in. You can see it's kind of a, it's on the thicker side. Didn't you make um, a cake like this once that had sour cream in it? Uh, I have made sour cream cakes before. But I mean in a pan like this, I seem to remember one that I came might have. really you moist. Know, we, we make a lot of cakes yes. around here on yes, Cavalcade. Because uh, we like cakes. Who doesn't? Okay. I so, like sour cream in anything. Well, although this doesn't have sour cream in it, you know, sour cream is really a, a good ingredient to add moisture and richness yeah. to a batter. In this case, and this is how I'm just evening it out and giving it a little shake here. But in this case, you're going to say the pumpkin, the pumpkin itself has a purpose. lot of moisture and wetness in it. That's right. Liquid. Okay. So, we're in our pan. Oven's at 350. It's going to go in 35 to 40 minutes or until the cake test's done uh, with a toothpick in the center coming out clean. Okay, so we'll come on back. And in the meantime, I'm going to continue our... Mm, yeah, I think by the time the cake cools down, our uh, frosting ingredients, at least the cream cheese and the butter, will be, soft will be ready to to make to our, our so Ralph it's been uh, oh, almost 40 minutes and check it out Ooh, 40 minutes in that beautiful oven in the beautiful Westinghouse so oh yeah this is done I don't even need to toothpick it watch watch it spring back see that see how it's separated from the edges yeah so you know what spring it again I didn't get your here. Internet. See how when you when you push down gently it, it springs back. As opposed to your hand going right through the whole cake. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Oh, it just has that wonderful Yeah, it smells great. Pumpkin, a little bit of the cinnamon. Anyways, we're gonna let it cool. And then we'll do the frosting. Uh, we'll do the frosting, but I really want the cake to cool down quite a bit. Before yes. we, yeah, before the we cake's frost. cooled off. So Ralph, we're gonna fix our frosting. I put our cream cheese, I cut it up into four sections in our butter. Okay, these have been softening. You look how easy they're creaming together here. Oh yeah. Okay. So we'll get them nice and creamed up here. I'm gonna use our spatula. Okay, get that. So you want the cream cheese and the butter really mixed together. Now, what I'm going to do here, while that's sort of creaming away, we're going to add to that some vanilla and some cinnamon. So, I mean, you know, cream cheese frosting in and of itself is a big win, right? But when you take it up a little bit with some cinnamon, I'm going to put in and I really like to taste the cinnamon. So we're gonna put in one and about a half here, teaspoons of the cinnamon, okay? Okay. Then, if we were just making standard cream cheese frosting, it'd be the same recipe. We're gonna put in a good teaspoon of vanilla, okay? I never realized why cream cheese frosting is so delicious, because it's all fat, it's all butter <laughs> and cream cheese. Right. But you can see the cinnamon really gives it sort of this, yeah, this little, brownish little. color. Now, it's going to fade out a little bit because we haven't added anything sweet yet. I just really wanted to get the vanilla 
uh, cream cheese, butter, and cinnamon incorporated. Now that we have, I'm going to take the speed down here. And in, we got two cups of powdered sugar here. And yeah, careful. Otherwise, we'll have an episode of I Love Lucy <laughs> unintended. We're going to just, I'm going to put in about half, work that in, and then put in the other half here of our powdered sugar. So you put them in a little bit at a time, or at least half and half, just so it doesn't get too clumpy. Exactly. And, and you know, again, like you said, you know, you don't want a powdered sugar all over the kitchen. Um, I'm going to take this up a little bit now that we're sort of all in the bowl here. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep going with this until all of this is incorporated and we've got our nice, creamy, wonderful frosting here ready oh, to go. Would that be enough for a round cake as well? Uh, yeah, you could do a, you could do a, if you were doing an eight inch layer cake, say. So I'm going to scrape, almost done. Give it another minute in the mixer and then we're going to, we'll have it. We'll get it on the cake. Those mixers and beaters are going to be something to eat. I was eat. asking Kevin, because I could tell that those beaters were getting really full of frosting and I was asking him how he's going to get all that off and I always like to tell folks that my grandpa used to say that God invented fingers before forks and there he went over to the sink to wash his hands so I think that's what he's going to do right? Absolutely so we're going to get Can't wait there's a that. lot of good there's a lot of cream cheese goodness on these beaters here and so basically I just washed my hands and we're going to you know these old style beaters have got the bar in the center yeah and it <laughs> new ones don't have that it, it tends bring, to collect it brings back memories i remember frosting. being little and uh my mom giving us the beaters to you know to lick clean. and yeah, clean with our right. fingers and i just remember that part that you're talking about i'd forgotten about that that gets that really was hard to lick because that, it's all but, the way but it had some of the largest deposits of the deliciousness so anyways like all right, mining I'm, for gold. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get this. And then okay. we'll be right back. And then, All right, back. Ralph. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's our frosting goodness right there. And it does have a sort of a pretty color from the cinnamon. Yeah. You can tell it's, you know, it's not white like yeah. a, a it traditional. Well, it goes with the pumpkin this because it's almost trees. like a brownish orange. Yeah, and you know, it just makes it, it makes that frosting just a little bit more interesting with the cinnamon in there and it really kind of it, it melds nicely with the flavor of the cake and so there we have it all right now we're gonna we grab a spatula here and we will just spread this over now because this is a cream cheese frosting butter and cream cheese once you've got this frosted, folks, you need to put it in the fridge, okay? And, you know, the frosting, the butter and cream cheese, once it gets warm, it's going to... Uh, Soften too much. It's going to get hard, you know, Once it, it gets up. warm. Or once it gets warm, it, yeah. So before you serve it, you need to take it out of the fridge and give it time to come up to room temperature. Let's see. So that the frosting isn't, you know too uh, difficult to yeah or separates from the cake or anything so yeah, yeah you don't want it too cold it has to sort of warm up and it tastes better that way too yeah so there it is we're gonna wow, that just looks really good I'm gonna try to even this out here put some swirls in it I got some spackling jobs I need you to do if you're, <laughs> when you're done no you're yeah, good we also do plaster you're work. good with that look at him go folks he's Frosting that cake, and I think if I'd have done that, <laughs> it wouldn't have looked so nice. Well, we try here. Okay. There it is. Yeah, I do like the color because when you go th this way and you see the, the orangish brownishness, and then you see the kind of lightly colored off white frosting, it's a good match. Keep a, yeah, Almost keep looks like a spice here. cake. Yeah. It oh, is. And I see what you're doing. That's his little trick. He takes a wet, damp paper towel to clean off the edges to make it a little more there lovely. Is, Our beautiful, pumped, homemade from scratch, 
pumpkin cake with cinnamon cream cheese frosting. Now normally we'd be tasting it, getting into yes. it, but oh, this would we? This is going in. This is going to For, a party, so we can't. Uh, we can't attack even. It there's no. Yet. There's no subtle way to carve a slice out of this and then do the cover up. Sometimes <laughs> you can, not with this cake. No, so, but, anyways, but, but you'll take it to a party. They'll love it, yeah. and we'll let, we'll report back on how good it was. So you know what? We had a great time putting this cake together. And thank you for being a part of it. Yeah, and thanks for watching. You know what? We'll see you all next time right here on Cavalcade of Food. Sure will. Bye, everybody. Bye.